welcome back to the News at 10. The Chief Security Officer to former President Goodluck Jonathan Gordon Obwa may not be set free soon by the Department of State Services. And that's because the CSO is reported to have been re-arrested and taken into DSS custody after being treated in the hospital on Monday for an undisclosed ailment. Mr. Obwa himself joined in addressing other DSS officials in briefing the media, dousing tension that he may have died. He says he remains a member of the DSS and has not retired as reported. However, he was reported to have fainted on Monday after embarking on hunger strike to protest his detention. As a result, he was rumored to have died and was promptly released for treatment. Mr. Obwa has been in detention since July the 16th. Let me use this opportunity to thank all Nigerians, members of my family, and concerned citizens who have expressed very serious concern for the past six days because of the prevailing situation between I and my office. This morning, my attention was drawn to the fact that I have died in detention. This has caused serious anxiety within the populace. I want to use this medium to tell Nigerians, members of my family, and all concerned citizens that I'm healthy. I'm a staff of the Department of State Services and having completed my tour of duty as Chief Security Officer of, to the President, to the last President, the service feels that I should give account of my tenure. So far, there is no adverse situation, and I am optimistic that Nigerians will be informed in due course. The former Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex Bade, has officially handed over to his successor, Major General Abayomi Olunishake. Addressing a news conference after the handover ceremony in Abuja, the new Chief of Defense Staff said it was time for the military to redouble its efforts in curbing terrorism in the country, especially in the Northeast. This change of buttons by the Chief of Air Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, and the new Chief of Defense Staff climaxes all the transfer of powers from the former service chiefs to their successors. For the new Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Abayomi Olunisaki, the time has come for the Nigerian military to redouble its efforts in the ongoing counterterrorism operations. Some of you here have been field commanders and senior staff officers at various levels, and you have been involved in various efforts to address these security challenges. While appreciating our collective effort, it is instructive to state that we must redouble our resolve at addressing these security challenges. The country expects nothing less from us. At a separate ceremony to hand over the leadership of the Nigerian Air Force and the Nigerian Navy to their new leaders, the two service chiefs also identified security as top in their priorities, while the chief of naval staff stressed the need to step up the fight against crude oil theft. His counterpart at the Air Force promised prudent use of resources to motivate officers and men for the counterinsurgency operations. The negative impact of maritime crimes on the nation's economy is severe and cannot be allowed to continue. 
during my tenure, the service will frontally confront crude oil theft and other criminal activities in the maritime environment with all the resources at our disposal. I intend to critically evaluate where we have been, where we are now, in order to chart a course for where we intend to be. I will build on the foundation led by my predecessor, paying special attention for the need to be very prudent in the management of our scarce resources. As it stands, all new service chiefs recently appointed by President Muhammadu Buhari have officially resumed their offices as leaders of their various services. For now, Nigerians can only hope to see how this change of gods will translate into an improved security for the country in the days ahead. The former head of service of the Federation, Mr. Steve Oronsai, who was accused of money laundering to the tune of 1.9 billion naira, has been granted bail on self-recognition by a federal high court in Abuja. Mr. Oronsai, who was charged along with two others, will however deposit his travel documents with the court to fully secure his bail. Now, a legal practitioner, Mr. Obi Callistus, is now in charge as Acting Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. He succeeds Mr. Patrick Akpopulokemi, who was recently sacked by the federal government. Before his elevation, Mr. Obi was the Executive Director, Maritime Labor and Cabotage Service in the agency. He brings two decades of experience in the public sector, law practice, and the maritime industry. Now, students of the University of Bini, Edo State, have laid siege to the Bini-Lagos Expressway in protest against the death of two of their colleagues who were allegedly knocked down by a military patrol vehicle. Led by the Students' Union president, the protesters are demanding that speed breakers and traffic signs be erected on the road and the families compensated. The students further requested that the pedestrian bridge be constructed at the university gate within a year. Meanwhile, the Dean of Students Affairs, Professor Francis Osagede, has given the assurance that the university authorities will look into their demands as soon as possible. Now, 199 prisoners have been released in Kano State to decongest prisons as ordered by President Muhammadu Buhari. Most of the inmates were those still waiting to be taken to court alongside many others who could not pay their fines. Prisons in Kano are already overpopulated, as the state is said to have the largest number of inmates. Mostly on a waiting trial or unable to settle their fines, these people have been in prison for many months. According to Governor Ganduje, his government will not tolerate any form of crime as it tries to keep the state prison centers within capacity. The governor called on the freed prisoners to remain law-abiding as they go back into the society. Those who are disadvantaged, like you, who are confined in this prison, we can ensure that they are being punished. Governor Ganduje also released some 60 young men from the state remand home. According to the governor, their change ways warrants a reintroduction into the society. You don't commit crime again any time. On the condition that you are going to be good citizens of that area. Meanwhile, Governor Ganduje has promised that his government will continue to ensure the welfare of Kano State civil servants. Take a look at some business in a few minutes and Al Mwawudu will be joining us. First Bank. You first. Hello and welcome to Business News. Figures from the Nigeria Insurance Commission shows that there are 3 million insurance policy holders compared to 24 million bank account holders. The investment and securities trading firm FBN Capital released an investment calling for a further consolidation in insurance business to tap into the informal sector and the selling of policies to trade groups 
and cooperative societies. Local insurance firms were also advised to tap into the premium flight of an estimated $750 million annual in reinsurance money concentrated in the aviation and the oil and gas sectors. Nigeria has 36 million insurance or 36 insurance firms listed in the stock exchange. The industry employs some 50,000 and posts a gross premium income of 319 billion naira in the 2014 financial year. The Nigerian Bulls opens today after a long holiday, marking the end of the Muslim festival. It posted a positive close in what is seen as a response to President Muhammad Buhari's visit to the United States. Christy Cole has the detail. Hello and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. After a four-day holiday marking the end of the Ramadan season, Nigeria's equities market recorded its second positive close for the third quarter, with the Osher index going up 0.92% at 31,334.79 points. Nestle leads the session's gainers, appreciating 16 naira 93 cobble. Mobile share price went up 5 naira, while total gained 4 naira and 5 cobble. Guarantee Trust Bank, Berger, and Cement Company of Northern Nigeria are the top losers today. Guaranteed Trust Bank shared 50 cobble. Berger Paint share price went down by 49 cobble, while Cement Company of Northern Nigeria shared 47 cobble. On the volume chart, Zenith Bank tops with sales of 729 million shares. Access Bank follows, selling 65.6 million, while Union Dark sold 51.7 million units. By the end of trading, just over a billion shares were exchanged for 15 billion naira in 3,471 deals. And that's the Stock Markets Report. I am Christy Cole. Thanks a lot, Christy. Well, as Nigeria and Singapore continue to seek new ways to enhance their trade relations, signing the bilateral trade agreement and the avoidance of double taxation agreement have become more critical. Nigeria's ambassador to Singapore, Ambassador Noye Rajes Opara, who was an heir on our show, Business Incorporated, earlier, says despite the challenges, she is optimistic that documents will be signed very soon. One of the one of the problems we had with signing BASA, for example, is Nigerian government was kind of slowing down because we didn't have a national carrier. And usually this thing is done by, uh, between the, the, the national carrier of Singapore and national carrier of Nigeria. But since we don't have a national airline, Nigeria was trying to negotiate with a carrier that will represent the interests of Nigeria. In, in, a, in a place where you don't have a national carrier, we'll start collecting royalty until you have your own national carrier. But I believe that so far Nigeria is trying to collect royalty right now on the basis of that BASA agreement until we can float our own national carrier. But Singapore Airlines has the right now to start negotiating coming to Nigeria directly or indirectly with the one stop either in any of the African countries or in any of the European countries or even an Asia country. So once the BASA is signed, it gives room for that other side of the negotiation. Currently, BASA has been signed. The cargo airline, the Singapore cargo, flies into Lagos and at least two to three times a week. So it's the passenger one that actually, the one that actually is the, that oils and facilitates the trade relationship between Nigeria and Singapore. And uh, by the grace of God, we'll put that to rest uh, at, the, at, the, at the sideline of the forum. Ogun State Governor Ibi Kunle Amosu has assured interested investors and business owners of the state or in the state of better and conducive business environments that will ensure good returns on their investments. Governor Amosu said this while addressing the management of the West African cotton, which is proposing a $5 billion investment to the state's agricultural sector. While promising to deliver the necessary political will to drive the state's economy, the governor says that sourcing local investment has become imperative in view of the dwindling resources from the federation account. The only way to go is to have our state to be private sector driven ultimately. And that's what we are trying to do. Because you've talked about it, we need to employ our people. And in employing them, we will create wealth for them. And that is the only way to go, particularly now that uh, with the dwindling revenue from the federal government. I'm one of those that never believed in waiting for what comes from the, from the federal uh, government. 
for me, any state that is not self-sustaining is not worth being a state. That's it for business news at this time. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Mwawadu. We'll take a look at the global market figures. Ijoma will be back with the rest of the news at 10. First Bank. You first. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles defender Kenneth Omerua, CEO's loan move to Turkish club Hasim Pasa. That's on Sports. Stay with us.